Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you a review of Temp Worker Assassins by David Newton. So let's start with what it is it? Well, let's take a look at the box. Hmm. Well, we've got a guy with a temp badge dressed in a suit, but with like a ninja mask on. Uh, stood on a desk, so it's set in an office, and then we have a hobbit carrying stuff. Hmm, well, the artwork seems to pretty much be supporting the name that it's about temp workers who are assassins. And yes, it is. Uh, it's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek um, humour game, really. The nature of the game is it combines deck building and worker placement. Two incredibly good and interesting mechanics that appear in some of my favourite games. So, why don't we take a look at the table and see how it works combining those, and then we can come back and you can hear my thoughts on it. This is the table all set out for a two-player game. So we've got here our blue player, so he has five blue people, and we've got our red player with five red people. Now, if you were doing a three or more player game, each person would only have four people. Here we've got a marker just marking that the red player would be our first player. Up here we have the card representing the day of the week it is. So the game is split into five rounds, each round representing a different day of the week for you to kill people. Because you are each temp workers who have been hired to go into this business and kill the staff there. But of course, they have security measures, so you can't bring any weapons. That's where these cards come into play. These are your stationary cards. So you'll be raiding the company stationary in order to make weapons in order to kill these workers who are up here. The first person each day to get a kill will also get the day card added to their discards, which will therefore help them in future kills and rounds. As we progress to the next round, we would play the next day and once we have finished Friday, that's then the end of the week, and we total up the points. So the points you get for killing are given in the top left of the workers here. And there's always these typing pool zombies who have a one point and an easy five health to kill. You only need to match that number, you don't need to beat it. Then, of course, out here we have the locations that our workers can visit. So these blue ones are fixed for each game, although it does say in the rules that you may wish to remove one of them to increase the difficulty level. Then these brown locations here will change. There is a big deck of locations, as you can see, so you'll have a lot of variation in the different locations that you can visit in games, which is a good thing. Here we have a player's hand, and each player will have 10 starting cards. So we've got their deck and their hand. The starting cards are colour-coded by the backing. So this is the blue player's cards because the black backing is blue. Each player draws a starting hand of five cards to start the game. Over the course of a round, you'll start with your first player choosing to place one of their assassins. Now, they can either place it on one of the locations or on one of the workers here to try and assassinate them. If they choose a worker, they'll place it on that worker. So let's say the red player here is trying to assassinate one of these typing pool zombies. They would then play the cards from their hand in order to generate attack. So for example, he has an attack one, he has a discard a card, then draw a card. So he could play that, discard this plus one pencil, and draw another card. Oh, sorry, he's got a plus zero pencil. Why is he discarding a plus, plus one? It makes no sense. And then he would continue to play cards. So in this situation, he ended up with four attacks which isn't enough, but whether you succeed or fail in a, an assassination, you are then investigated by security. So you get moved to the security location. You then put any cards used or left in your hand into your discard pile. 
And then as per the security card, you draw a hand of five cards. Whenever your deck is empty and you need to draw cards, you'll simply shuffle your discard pile to form your new draw deck. And then you draw the remaining cards. It would then be the blue player's turn to place an assassin. So he can place it on one of these locations. It's important to note that some of these locations, especially these blue starting ones, have multiple spaces. So multiple people can go on that card. For example, this blue player could go here and then the red player could still go on any of the other free spaces on that card. This card over here has two different spaces and you get an extra benefit if you occupy both of them. So let's talk a bit about what some of these actions can do. So let's say he does go here. It says game one, trash one. So whenever a locational card would say game one, you would take a card from the four available stationary cards and add it to your hand. You then replenish the four so that there are always four available. The other thing this location said he could do is trash a card. That means you will take a card from your hand and remove it from the game. If you go to a location such as this draw free trash one, whenever you're told to draw, you will simply draw that many cards from your deck and add them to your hand. The other thing you might need to do is discard cards, which would simply be put them in your discard pile. There's also research. So if a card says that you can perform research, it will say research and then a number. So here we have research 4322. Two. So if we did research 4, we would draw four cards off of the stationary card deck, look at them and choose one to add to our hand. The other three would get discarded. Also, there is the clear ability. That means that you remove all the cards in the available stationary pool and discard them, then replace them. It's important to note that when you're doing an assassination, some cards have a lot of different options of things that you must do. For example, this machine gun stapler. It says discard four pencils plus four attack, draw two cards. You must be able to do everything on that card in order to be able to play it. So for example, if I did not have four pencils to discard, I could not play this card in order to get the plus four attack. This is especially important with ones that say to discard and draw cards, such as this remorseless lunchbox here, because it says discard two identical cards, draw three cards. It's important that you have to do the discard before you do the draw in this case. And you, that is how you play. Each day will be over once each player is used all their workers. So let's say we had all these guys out here on the locations. That's then the end of the day and we would move to the next day. So each person will take their workers back and the first player marker passes round to the left. And then you begin with the next day. So it would be Tuesday and the first person to successfully kill would get the Tuesday card. You'll do this until you have finished Friday, at which point whoever has the most points in workers killed will win the game. That is how you play temp worker assassins. Well, what do I think? Normally I would talk about the components and artwork and stuff, but this actually isn't out yet, no. You see, this is a game coming to Kickstarter in the summer of 2016, and this is just a demo copy. Now, the artwork is actually finalized on this game, but the printing isn't. So although the art is quite interesting on some of these cards, obviously some of it might change, but more importantly, looking at the cards here, they are printed in RGB rather than CMYK, 
or some such. So it's not as good quality printing on these cards and it doesn't appear true colour, more importantly. Everything will be slightly more washed out than it would be in reality. That said though, I do like the artwork, especially on the workers that you're assassinating. They're very nice, interesting, tonning cheek kind of <sighs> mick-taking of fantasy settings. You know, you've got orcs, halflings, you've got a curl orc, you know, you've got typing pool zombie. These are interesting, amusing cards, but I don't like the artwork on the stationary cards. I find it very drab, very boring. I think not necessarily the artwork itself, just the layout of the card as a whole. You, you know, it's very washed out and kind of puts me off slightly. But, you know, the location cards, completely fine. The workers, these are not finalized, so I'm not gonna talk about those. Component-wise, as I say, it's not final card stock or anything like that. The box doesn't have an insert currently, so I can't really talk about that, but I can talk about the most important thing when it comes to a game, and that is the gameplay. So what do I think of the gameplay? I think this is a really good, really interesting game. Now, the first couple of times I played it, I thought there was a bit of a runaway leader issue because we had a runaway leader. But I have since played it a lot more times and found that it is much more balanced than that. That as you play the game more, you get more used to it, you are more able to react to what other people are doing and to claw your way back. It's very important in this game that you spend the early game doing more of the deck building aspect uh, with the worker placement than with the assassinations. You might do a bit now and then, but it's more about getting your deck to a point where you can then go kill, 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 kill. Works really nicely, but I have seen people do it the other way. Just go once each round, big kill, big kill, big kill. And the odd little kills where they're able to do it gradually. The whole way it works with placing your worker, dictating what cards you get is nice, it is interesting. You do get that deck building feel and you do still have that worker placement feel. One issue I do have with it is that it is very luck dependent. You see, not all of these stationary cards are equal. Some are definitely better than others, especially some will key in more to the strategy that you're playing to, depending on the locations you had available, etc. And you might go, oh, well, there's nothing really good there at the moment. Now, well, I'll take this one that, you know, it's okay. And then the perfect card comes out and you're never going to get a chance to get it because it's going to be jumped on by the next player. And that seemed to happen quite a lot in playing. So there is a luck aspect there, but it is mitigated somewhat in what you're choosing to do because you could choose to do researching where you're looking through the deck rather than taking from the available face up. You can reset that pile. You know, there are options there. But as I say, there is a luck element there. Otherwise, it's pretty high on the strategy other than that. Obviously, you've got the typical deck building thing of you never know what's going to come up in your hand. And that makes the assassinations quite interesting because generally when you're doing an assassination, you're not going to start with the amount you need in your hand. No, you're going to have, you may draw this many cards, you may draw this many cards, etc. And you're sat there going, well, if that allows me to draw this or this or this, I can manage it. But if it draws that one card, I'm going to fail. And so you have to kind of gamble a bit, which creates excitement in the game. And it is an interesting, enjoyable game. But of course, the one thing I haven't talked about yet is how does this scale? Because of course, this is two can play that game. So we need to answer that question. Two can play that game. It isn't as good with two as it is four. Four seems to be the optimum number for this at the moment. Now, I will say the reason for that seems to be the locations, because there's, it feels like there's too many locations available when you're playing at two player. There doesn't feel like there's enough of, oh, I'm blocked there, I'm blocked there. Oh, there's so few locations I can choose from now. Whereas at four player, you do get that. You get it a little at three, two, meh because there's so fewer workers being placed out. You do each get an extra worker, but that's one extra worker as opposed to four in a free player game being put out. 
So I think you need to really reduce the number of work, um, not workers, reduce the number of locations when you're playing with a two player game. That way it will help readdress that balance on the worker placement, but it does then reduce the tactical options. So there's a bit of give and take with both of those there. And but uh, yeah, it, it is a fun, enjoyable game. It's just a bit less confrontational, a bit less clashy on that worker placement, which is common with most worker placements, really. So if you find that you enjoy deck builders or you enjoy worker placement, you want to see how those combine. If you like the tongue cheek humor of you've gone into this office and you need to kill these people, but you couldn't bring any weapons in. So you're using pencils sharpened or rulers that shatter. You'll enjoy this game. It is a good, enjoyable game. And I do recommend that you check out the Kickstarter when it comes live. So that's my thoughts on it. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and family, as well as taking a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.